In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to create these two retro computer screen title animations. Hi, my name is Manuel. We'll animate the title based on expressions and add this low-res computer screen look using standard effects. So better stick around. Time to dive in. I've created a new comp. Now let's grab the type tool and add some lines of text. I use Source Code Pro Regular, which is an Adobe font. Size 100 pixels. Generally, I would recommend using a monospace font as they are used for coding. We align the text to the right and position it somewhere in the center. Now let's animate the text using an expression. But first we go to Effect, Expression Controls and add a slider. And very important, name it Speed, as it controls the speed of the typewriter effect. Then we open the text property and click on that little stopwatch next to source while holding option to add an expression. Then we copy and paste the expression into the expression field. And nothing happens, as we haven't changed the slider value yet. We set it to 25, which means 25 letters per second are revealed. I've added the expression to the description of the video, as well as the link to where I found it. Alright, time to get a little nerdy and at least try to break down the expression for you guys. In the first part there are three variables which are defined. Then there is an expression, which leads to the main expression. L, the first variable, represents the text length. T is time multiplied with the speed effect slider value, which we added before. This basically makes the typewriter effect move forward. F represents the blinking cursor loop. The expression defines the cursor doesn't blink until the typing is finished. If t is greater than the length and less than zero, it blinks. fl, the blinking cursor changes between underscore and space. In the main expression, there's the typewriter effect plus the blinking cursor, which was established in the expression before. <laughs> awesome, enough of that, I guess. Let's add a background. We add a new solid, command y, name it grid, color white. And add Venetian blinds. Transition completion 95%, width 6. Then we duplicate the effect and change the direction to 90 degrees, which creates little squares where the lines overlap. Then we add glow. The settings are fine, we duplicate that effect as well to make it shine even brighter. Then we add fill and change the color into a bright green. And if we zoom back out, it is very subtle, exactly what we want. We add another solid, almost black, slightly more green than red and blue. Name it background light. Move it down as well as the grid. Then double click on the rectangle tool, which adds a new mask. We open the mask property and set the mask feather to 200, which makes the layer fade to black towards the borders. We probably should add a black solid below that one. Then we duplicate the grid layer and move it above the text layer. And delete all the effects except Venetian Blinds 2, the one with the 90 degrees direction. We use the layer as Luma Inverted Mat for the text layer to cut lines into the text. And we add a Gaussian Blur and set the blurriness to 2 to soften the borders a little. Next, we select the text layer and add Mosaic to get that low-res pixel look. We set the blocks to Remember, the line's width is 6, so 1920 divided by 6, 320 horizontal blocks. And 180 vertical blocks, which perfectly fits to the background grid. Then we add a fill and choose a green color. And to let it shine, we add a glow, set the glow radius to 50 this time. Awesome, but somehow too perfect. We need the text to flicker slightly. Therefore, we press T to open the opacity property, click on the stopwatch while holding option, and add a simple wiggle expression. Wiggle parenthesis, and in between 12,50, which means the opacity changes 12 times per second with an amplitude of 50. Then we add an adjustment layer, option command Y, name it position, and link all layers, except the bottom black one, to it. 
Now we open the position property and again add a wiggle expression. This time 12,1 in between the parentheses to let it shake slightly. It moves 12 times per second, max 1 pixel. Finally, we add another white solid, name it light, and use the rectangle tool to add a mask. We open the mask property and set the mask feather to 250, which is way too bright, so we set the opacity to 3%. We move the mask above the screen, go to the beginning and add a mask path keyframe. After maybe 25 frames, we move it below the screen and change the new keyframe into a toggle hold keyframe. So that it stays below the screen until we copy and paste the keyframes, it jumps back up and moves down again. One more thing, we add posterize time and set the frame rate to 12. Awesome! That's the first title animation. Time for version 2. We want it to look more like coding and the lines moving upwards. First of all, we duplicate the comp. We select the text layer and whenever a new line is added to the text block, the height changes. So whenever the height value increases, the position value needs to go up just as much for the bottom line to stay at the same position. So we add an expression to the position property. Copy and paste it into the expression field. This means the Y position moves up as much as the height of the text block changes. Again, I've added the expression and the link in the description. Let's move it back to the center. Now there's a problem. Whenever the underscore is visible, the height changes and the position of course. Well, to give it a slightly different vibe, let's change the text into capitals, first of all. The first workaround would be to go into the source text expression and change the underline into a less than sign. Problem solved. <laughs> if you want to keep the underline, the second workaround would be to find the frame just before the cursor disappears for the first time. Then duplicate the text and mask layer and adjust the endpoint of the bottom two layers. Next, disable the position expression and move the text back up in its position. Set a position keyframe, go one frame to the left and move it down below the screen and change this one into a toggle hold keyframe. I know it's not a nice solution, but it works. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and hit the bell to get notified when my next video is coming up. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!